In a world with Psycho Santas and Old Man Zombies, there's only one movie that can make sense of it all, and that is 1972's Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> oh, buddy, you forgot killer blind people. Should I retake it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's up, Patrick? Not much, man. Uh, I am Drew. I am uh, your. Uh, damn it! I didn't prepare one. President Andrew Jackson. Uh, and this is the comic book picture show. Obviously, as you heard the intro, we are doing Tales from the Crypt today. Yeah, it was pretty chill. Yeah, we just got finished watching it. It was actually like not bad for what I thought it was going to be. It was a good change of pace from the last couple, right? Oh my god, we have not enjoyed these first couple, <laughs> and we finally got to one we enjoyed, you guys. Oh my god. Alright, anyways, let's go through the, the procedurals we gotta do. Uh, Tales from the Crypt was released on March 8th, 1972, by 20th Century Fox in the UK. Something else put it out here in the US. But frankly, I don't give a shit. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it was directed by uh, Freddie Francis, uh, who is, like, mainly a cinematographer, but uh, directed a couple of, like, culty horror films. Cool. Most notably, Mumsy, Nanny, Sonny, and the Girly. I haven't heard of any of those. That's one movie. Is it? Yes. That's one? Okay. Mumsy, Nanny, Sunny, and Girly. Or as released in the U.S. as Girly. Much simpler title, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I prefer Mumsy, Nanny, Sunny, and Girly. Why? I don't know. It's real weird. Yeah. Uh, and then it was written by a man who doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> Milton Sabotsky? S- S- Milton Sabotsky. That's what I'm going to go with there. Uh, so I can't tell you much about him, because uh, I couldn't really find much on him. Must have been... Uh, One hit wonder? I guess. I don't know. Usually you find anything, something, even short films or something but by somebody. Right. But uh, you want to guess the budget on this feature we just watched? Uh 72? I don't know. It didn't look like it had that high of a budget. Yeah, I I don't... I only know numbers, like, as they are now. Yeah. But, like, like, if they remade this movie, Frame for Flame... Flame for Flame. Flame for Flame. (laughs) (laughs) Flame for Flame! (laughs) Uh, Frame for Frame, but, like, with, like, modern CGI and stuff, I bet this movie would cost, like, $10 million. But, uh... It was made for 170000 which is weird. Yeah. That's really low. Right. Like, I, I even think for that time, it's really low. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, it, it made $3 million in the box office. Wow. So all these movies we're doing, sort enough, real low in the box office stuff. When we start getting up to our modern times, these numbers are going to seem... Skyrocket. So yeah, <laughs> staggering. And we're going to be like, this movie's a fucking bomb. It only made $117 million. Right. Uh, well, look at what it was made for compared to what they made right, off of it right. still. Yeah. This movie, like, made 15 times its budget. Right. <laughs> uh, I want to go into the starring to yet because we'll get into that as we go through all the stories but we do have to get to one of our segments which is is it rotten so patrick i ask you every week is this movie rotten 
the last two weren't rotten, this one definitely is fresh. Yes, it is. <laughs> With 89%. When I saw that earlier, and I'm just in this mindset that this movie's going to suck because all of our movies have sucked so far. <laughs> right. That uh, I was like, no way, 89. What the fuck is everybody... What's, what's in the Kool-Aid... It, with this movie like I don't get it because Barbarella had like 69 and we were like no no that movie was terrible well they told five different stories all which were very different from each other yeah so it worked uh I did write down a couple of the reviews uh from Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun Times on October 23rd 2004 wrote it's put it's put together something like comic books, with the old Crypt Keeper acting as the host and narrator. True, but this guy is definitely a lot more ominous than, like, the TV series Crypt Keeper I've seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. He's just there kind of being super vague and stuff. Just kind of adding in to making sequiturs. Right, well, it, it kind of real uh, brings you in thinking that they're telling you a story of what could potentially happen right the entire time that's not the case right which it we'll get into what but it really gives itself away so fucking fast uh and then from vincent camby uh of the new york times on may 9th 2005 wrote unfortunately the only style exhibited by freddie francis who directed the film and Milton uh, Sabotsky, who wrote it, is the dumb appreciation of ancient plot devices, and especially in their high-handedness with other people's stories. Well, here's the thing. Like, you can't... A, it's... Again, you said it's other people's stories that they're just adapting. Right. So, like, can't knock them for that part of it. That's weird. And, like, a lot of the plot devices I found fun and semi-original to what I had seen from that era so far. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta think, this is a time before, like, The Exorcist, The Hills Have Eyes probably was coming out this year. No Friday the 13th. No, uh, Nightmare Before, or Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, you know, all these things where it's like, you had, like, Hitchcock movies, and, like, maybe some Kubrick shit, right. but not, like, The Shining. Maybe A Clockwork Orange came out the year before this? I'm not sure, but, yeah, I mean, there's source material to this stuff, so they're, like you said, they're just adapting it, mm -hmm. so, uh, I haven't read it, I know you haven't read it, we mm -hmm. were talking about that earlier. Yeah, which but, I wish I had gone back and read these specific stories, because right? I do have noted what stories they are. But, you know, if they're just adapting the stories that are already there, how can you fault them for originality? Yeah. Uh, should we get into our next segment? Let's do it. The next segment is Where'd It? <laughs> so, this one's kind of a difficult one for us to do because we, again, we didn't read the comics and I didn't pull any images from those said comics as our source material. So, we kind of have to go off what we see people wearing in this movie. Right. Um, Crypt Keeper looking like a monk is weird. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Joan Collins' outfits are pretty. Is it nice? Yeah, this one's a little harder than the other ones that are going to be straight up, like, superhero yeah. movies, uh, just because it's regular clothing. Although, I'll admit, the middle guy, who I believe is... The, the character's name is James Elliot. He's a rich, pompous asshole kid. I hated every single one of his outfits. Yeah. He always looked like a fucking twat. There was either, like, Fruffle in the middle, or there was, like, an ascot thing. I think that's what they were going for. I with know. Them. I wanted and to they punch were him in the face the whole time. Yep. He looked like a fucking prep school goth the whole time. Like, he was supposed to be at a cure show, and it's 1972. Why are we doing this? Blech. I, all the other guys just look like generic. Generic businessmen. Yeah. There's nothing really to talk about with them. Although that one guy's wife's hair was something, the redhead, 
because she had like a perm going pretty much all around the skull. But then there was like wavy, swoopy uh, Mrs. Brady curls going down. I was like, that's just a lot going on up in there. That took some time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going for two very different, distinct things. It was like a, a perm mullet to me. A perm mullet? It was a perm mullet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a a pulmet. <laughs> <laughs> it was It was much. It was much. But yeah, uh, I guess that's where it is. Because... <laughs> What else do we have to talk about? Burton, dear. And this one's kind of unfair. I mean, this is like an unfair thing for most of these early episodes. We're going to get into them more. Although next week we can have some blind rank. Because this is the first of six Tales from the Crypt movies. Wow. That we are going to have to do. And the second one comes next week. <laughs> back to back, huh? Yeah. We get the Vaulty of Horror next week. Ooh. Okay. So, these characters are, these characters were created by William Gaines and Ad Fe- Al Feldstein, pardon me. Uh, well, the characters not so much as much as the concept of the Tales from the Crypt uh, structure. Right. These were all done by various artists and writers throughout the years. Uh, I don't have them all written down, but uh, I will cite all of the issue sources, so if you ever want to go back, read them, and look at who created them. I don't know. Tweet them at me. I'm, I'll favorite it. I'll, fa- I'll give you a favorite. That's yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll turn the heart on. <laughs> turn on the heart, love, love, <laughs> Sorry. What do you want me to say? I don't know anymore. Alright, let's get into this fucking movie, dude. Yep. So we start out, you know, title cards, and then three minutes of shadowy statues. Ooh. Yeah, dude, yeah. What's up with statues and being creepy, right? In all those older movies. Like, it's always, whenever there's a creepy movie, it's always shadowy, statuey places. Yeah, it's like, just have a bunch of moss on it, and it's fine. It, like, will, like, make you think of the past and all your sins. Like, but now it's like if they want to show something that is like sh- a sign of purity, it's like a nice, well lit statue or something in in movies. It's very weird. But we literally watch statues for three minutes while they just take their time with these title cards. Yeah, and then when they finally do show them, and they're going through the start of the crypt, I'm guessing. Yeah, they walk forever yeah. before they get like to another the door that opens. three minutes. Yeah, she drops her clip, and he picks it up. I remember that. Uh, the brooch, brooch, yeah. Which, like, she drops it, and then immediately finds it. And, yeah. like, it didn't seem like she noticed when it fell off. She just noticed that it was gone. So it was just like, that was a little too easy. But, yeah, I literally wrote, at six minutes, the door opens. <laughs> it was a long time getting there. Yeah. But uh, once we get in there, we get to meet the monk. Who is actually our uh, our crypt keeper, played by Ralph Richardson, and uh, it's just these five random people. He tells them all to take a seat. Yeah. He's got some stuff he wants to tell them. They're all like, "We have places to be," and he's like, "You're gonna listen to my story, damn it!" Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "I said it was story time. Get in your fucking chair, <laughs> you motherfuckers." How would have been way interesting way to do the movie (laughs) right but uh you know we start off with the lady uh and it's just like asking her what she what her plans are some bullshit like that and uh we're at christmas yeah it's christmas and it's like her her husband writing out a nice little cute christmas uh tag for her gift the Best most wife ge- in the world yeah, or whatever. The most generic thing in the world. <laughs> to Joanne, the best wife of the world. Love, Richard. Makes my heart bell. What a dick, right? Yeah. That's why he should have got the fire stick to the head. <laughs> fire poker. Wow. Which he did. Yep. That was a lot. Like, yeah. Right out of the gate. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And then she just wipes it off with a paper towel. And it's fine. 
because yeah. we don't have forensics back in the 1970s. Yep. If you're going to do that, maybe don't do it on top of the furry white carpet. Just yeah. saying, that's like probably the last place like, in the world. what are you doing? But I guess, like, I don't know, she didn't want to wait for him to go to bed and shit, because, you know, eventually we figure out she wanted to throw him down the stairs. Yeah, she's dragging the, him away. Of the basement. And then her da- their daughter yells to her as she's dragging him, at the same time as it says the Santa Claus killer is on the Yeah, the loose. a bed- uh, mentally, uh, cr- uh, whatever. Mentally insane person wearing mentally a Santa. Mentally insane person wearing a Santa suit is on the loose from the mental asylum. Be on the lookout, call the cops if you see him. But And she sees him in the window, but she can't call the cops because her husband's dead body is fucking still laying right there. Yep. So, finally, she gets uh, the husband down into the basement after throwing him down the stairs. And then, like, is scooping his blood up off of the carpet and the newspaper with a fork into a wine glass. Which is, you know, looks so damn elegant. Yeah. Right. When, it, it looked like red paint. It didn't even... It was the yeah, worst was, fake blood. Uh-huh. Fake blood back in the day was not good. Not good, my man. But, uh... I mean, that's how you like to clean up blood properly, right? After a good party. Just Super creepy, man. Toss him down the stairs and then pour a little blood on the back of his head. Yeah. They won't ask questions. Yep. I loved how, like, his scar for when she hit him was on the wrong side of where he landed, so she turned his head to the other side. Yeah. So the scar was on the bottom. And then, of course, she got to scrub the carpet because she did it on the white rug. And Dip shit. <laughs> and then she's cleaning off the poker and all that. And this entire time, fuck the crazy person that's outside the house that she dealt with for about two minutes, right? Yeah. Like, just leave him lurking. Yeah, it's and- fine. He'll find another house to bother. Meanwhile, the daughter comes down, opens up the window, and she's like, Santa's here. I let him in. <laughs> Hey, Bob, guess what? He's going to grab your face and try to put you in the fucking fireplace. Yeah. Oh, my God. And that's our first story. Oh, she opened up the present, too, and it was the brooch. Yes. Which basically should have tipped us off for the ending Which right it did away. immediately yeah. for me. <laughs> which it was like, oh, these aren't premonitions. These are how these people died. They're dead in the crypt. And that first story was called And All Through the House, which was taken from The Vault of Horror, issue number 35. We get our second guy being pissy and moaning, because we see him at his house, you know, he's telling his wife, oh, I gotta make some sales tomorrow, but I gotta drive overnight, because the blah, 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 whatever. Tells his kids he loves him, but bye. But him as goodnight. he did it, you could see the guilt on him right yeah. away. Yeah, like as soon as we saw his face, we're like, he's cheating on his wife. Yeah, we're like, where's he going? And then he goes and meets a woman in an empty apartment, which isn't that lovely. No. And, like, they actually repeat a bunch of themes in this movie. And this is the start of one of them, where they're in a car accident, where he falls asleep, and then he wakes up, they swerve the car, because another car is coming, and they go off the cliff, and the car fucking explodes. Yeah. Like He it, was having the bad dream. As they, uh, he woke up and then uh, the car was coming at him. Yep. And then uh, he, as the car fucking goes off the cliff, he come or uh, yeah, after the car explodes, he comes to is walking around. His he goes to his house. His wife sees him as a ghoul, and then he sees her in the house with another man. And it's like, ooh, it's scandalous! They're both cheating on each other. And then he goes to the new girlfriend's house. Her house is fully done up. Yep. And like it she's was empty. Blind. Yeah. Which is the start of a second theme that we have going through this movie. And he's like, what the hell? Why is everybody freaking out? She's like, you're fucking mutilated, dude. And it's been years since the car crash. He's like, what? They see zombie him. And he's like, whoa. And then he wakes up. And then we actually really have the car crash. Yeah, right. It so crazy. it's a premonition inside a premonition movie that was a fake out to be an actual this is how you really die movie. Mm-hmm. So we jammed three themes in one story. And that was a that was one of the shorter stories too. That might have been the shortest one, right? Because mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot to tell. Right. But, nice little story though. Yeah. That one was The Reflection of Death taken from Tales from the Clip uh, crypt 
tw number 23. And then we got this fucking asshole. Yeah, this. This these motherfucker. <laughs> this possibly homosexual piece of shit. Yep. Because my first note on him is let me find it here. Do, 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 do. Oh, pompous rich boy hates generous old man. Because this old man will just find, like, trash toys and then clean them up, fix them up, make them all nice and new, and then give them to the uh, children around the neighborhood. Hey, guys, let's go get trash toys from the old hobo down the street. Yeah, <laughs> They were all so excited to go and get the garbage toys. It's so weird <laughs> and kind of creepy, but, you know, he's a sweet old man. Yeah, I yeah, know, he's a sweet old and man. And this is a world where not everything's evil yet. <laughs> Stop stealing my lighter, dude. They're the same one. <laughs> I know. We're twenties. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this pompous piece of shit hates this old man because he, like, has, like, a shabby-looking house. He has a bunch of dogs, and he's nice to the children around the neighborhood. And, he, and this guy just lives with an older man that he doesn't really talk to like he's his father. So it just makes me think he's his much older boyfriend. Probably. It, he's a I mean, dickhead. he hates children. He All he cares about is making the neighborhood as spick and span as possible. And he lives with a much older man that he talks to like an equal. He's the worst kind of gay dude. He is super judgy on that guy, and he does the worst things. Like, you hear, oh, this guy's wife died, and all he does is give toys to kids. And he tortures the poor guy. Yeah, like, he uh, he tears up one neighbor's roses, and then, so the neighbor will think it's the old man's dogs, so the old, so the dogs get taken away. Which, like, what the fuck, like... Because he didn't have permits for them or whatever. Licenses. Licenses. Oh. He needed to have licenses for the dogs, but he couldn't oh. afford them. And, yeah, what assholes. Such nonsense. And then they want to take away his retirement pay. Uh, like, they convince the town or whatever to take away his retirement pay so he can't pay his bills in his house. Yep. How lovely. Then the poor guy tries to contact his wife because he's so upset with the Ouija board, and she tells him he's in danger. Yeah, by having him write it out on a chalkboard, which if you look how I have it written in my notes, isn't that fun? Yep, that's, that's how it was in the movie. Yeah, just for you and me. <laughs> no one else can really see this, but it's fun. Uh, yeah, and like, it's just, uh And then he writes cards that are addressed from everyone in, in the town, and they're all mean poems about how he should leave town. I know, man. That broke my heart seeing him read it. It's so mean. What? And, like, he wrote all of them. This little fruitcake is such a piece of shit. He took days to do that. And then the guy hangs himself. Yeah, he's trying to get the guy to move. The poor guy just gets sad. He doesn't try to lash out at anybody. Yeah about it or anything he ends up killing himself it's awful but then but then one, one year, year later <laughs> justice <laughs> the poetic kind yes that's right the name of this story is poetic justice taken from the haunt of fear number 12 any uh yeah so zombie old man comes back and fucking murders this dude yeah and his his boyfriend slash dad whatever yeah. he is to him finds daddy him. finds him <laughs> <laughs> he like lifts him up and uh, there's some weird note right yeah it says you guys were mean and cruel from the beginning uh, so now you really don't have and it shows his heart ripped out of his chest and it's still beating Which that, is, that it, was a nice little touch yeah as we were clowning the blood in the prior uh, skit, I guess you would say, in this type of yeah. thing, this one, they, they topped what I thought they could do with that one. Yeah, they jerked me around enough emotionally and then just showed me a literal part. And I was like, all right, movie, I'm on board now. I'm with you now. Good job. So we're three down. 
Boom. Two to go. What's this next guy going to do? Oh, well, him and his wife just don't want to file for bankruptcy because they have too much pride. Yep. Which isn't really a bad thing. And then, of course, they happen to just be looking at the stuff they have, and they find out they basically have a genie in a bottle, but it's a fucking statue. But. <laughs> yeah, they have a genie statue, which is real weird. And there's, like, engraving at the bottom. It's like... <coughs> oh, excuse me. A lot of words. Like, four lines of words. And, and half all, of it's, like, scribbled out. Yeah. And it's, like, all, like, basically telling the rules of the witch wishes and stuff and blah 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 and then the guy even references that it's kind of like the story of the monkey paw or the monkey's paw which was written by W.W. Uh, w. Jacobs and it it's basically the story of the monkey paw and they, they have like two slight differences and they literally point it out in the story which I just find really silly but the story of it is that the guy goes home they find the statue. She wishes for a lot of money. He was like, well, let's not wish that, because that's how it was in the monkey's paw. And she was like, well, too late. I already wished for it. So then he gets called back into the office. And on his drive, he fucking goes off a cliff. Hey, there's our other theme. He see the Grim Reaper chased about a motorcycle. Though. Yeah, that was weird. <coughs> Grim Reaper on a motorcycle. Ghost Rider, is that you? Yeah. Johnny? Johnny? Eddie? Is that you? <laughs> no way, Eddie would be in a car, pardon me. Right. So yeah, Grim Reaper follows him, and then he goes off the cliff. Again, we see a cliff dive. And then uh, his wife is like, no, I didn't want him to die. I don't want his health insurance money. That's a bummer. I want my husband. Their attorney or their business financier or whatever. The guy that he was talking about filing bankruptcy with he was like, well, definitely don't wish for him back because that's what happens in the monkey's paw. Like, the mom wishes for her son back after he dies. And she's like, after she wishes for money. And she's like, okay, well, I'll wish for him back the exact way he was right before he died, right before the accident. Yep, that's the word that she used. And guess what? He had a fucking heart attack, and that's why he went off the cliff. So he's still dead. But he's just dead in his casket in the middle of the house now. So a bunch of what look like Undertaker druids carry yep. his casket into the house yep. and explain that he died of a heart attack. Yep. So, of course, she goes, well, just bring him back again and have him be alive forever. But he was already embalmed. Yes. So now she's like, fuck, now he's in agony. He's screaming. He's like, oh, help me, help me, help me. So she grabs a samurai sword off the wall. And I'm not kidding. It was a samurai yeah. sword. And then she just starts hacking away. Just hacking and hacking. And it shows hysterically. like his intestines and his hand up by his face detached. And it's yeah. all moving because she said alive forever. So no matter how much she tries to put him out of his misery, it just puts him in more agony and he's going to be alive anyway. Which, here's my problem with that. Then we cut back to the crypt where he's dead. Yeah. So how did we finally get him gone? I... Do we put him in the fireplace and chart him to bits? Must the something must have happened. It doesn't explain that. Yeah. Plot hole find. There you are. Yeah, I got a couple of those already. <laughs> but it's not a bad movie. No. Um and then finally Oh yeah, and that story was called Wish You Were Here. Which was taken from the Haunt of Fear issue twenty two. And finally we have our last story, which is the Blind Alleys, taken from Tales from the Crypt, number 46. This is a story of Major William Rogers. Douchebag. Douchebag. <laughs> I thought at first he was running a retirement home. Uh, but no, it was just a bunch of elderly blind people, so it was specifically a home for the blind. And you know what? He doesn't even go in with a good attitude. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, how can I abuse these Fuckers. Yep, it's like immediately let's turn off their heat. Right. Like, <laughs> they don't need to be warm. Oh, they're sick, old, and can't see? 
They don't need to be warm. <laughs> yeah, it's totally fine. They're cool. I don't know why you didn't cut the electricity first. They're blind anyways. Right. They need the heat more. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but, like, just cut, just, uh, just keep the electricity on in the quarters where, like, there's going to be a bunch of staff for most of the hours. And then their bedrooms can, like, not have electricity. And you're if, fine. You, if you're going to cut like that, yeah. Like, if you're going to be a scumbag, be a, be a smart scumbag. Right, get them some blankets, damn it. Yeah, right. And this one dude is freaking out because, like, it's so cold. He won't get the main blankets. Meanwhile, he's sitting there with a roaring fire, like drinking Chardonnay or what what the fuck ever. Eating steak. Yep. And meanwhile, they're getting slop, and like he starts cutting their food portions too. Yep. So they're like, "Oh fuck this!" Finally, in the cold, one of their buddies dies. Yeah, and he asks for help, and he has to beg the guy just to go and take a look at him. Yeah, he's like, can he wait till morning to get a fucking doctor or something? Because they think he's sick, because, you know, he doesn't want to admit the guy's dead. Yeah. I think. I think he probably knew he was dead. Like, he was probably cold. I mean, they're all cold, but he was probably cold, cold. Yeah. Who knows? Although, apparently, your body temperature doesn't drop for a couple hours after you die. Right. Check his pulse, probably. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it's a real big bummer. And then, once the guy dies, they put a fucking plan in motion, dude. Yep. They all get up right away when they hear the news, and then they start plotting. And the first thing they do is they each gather up small portions of their food. And then they bathe the dog with it and bring him down into a basement uh, room and lock the door. Which, again back to basements. When the guy figures out Dodd's gone, that's when they all surround his office and be like, okay, you're doing what we say now. And they tie tie him up, sort of, and bring him down to the basement and lock him up in another room. And then they start building. Yep, they starve him and the dog for two days as they are building something out there. You're not really seeing what it is. You could just hear it being done. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, they're building a wall so that when they open the doors, he's just going to be trapped with the dog, and the dogs could eat him. That's going to be messed up. Yep. But no, they did a little bit more than that. They got creative. Yep. They got uber creative. These guys were vengeful. So, what they do? They build a tunnel. And the tunnel, obviously, is shaped kind of like a U. So that it goes from one room to the next. First, they have a string that pulls open his door. So he goes out into his tunnel. And he goes around the corner. He sees that the tunnel leads down a hall with razor blades all over the walls. And it just keeps getting more narrow as it goes. Yep. And he is able to slink through it just, just so. Scraping his hand up a couple times, but yo, know, he gets out of there with only two or three scratches. Yep, he's, he's fine. A few nicks and dings here and there. And then he goes around the corner, sees the other door, and he hears the dog barking behind it. He's like, ah, fuck. They fucking trapped me. And at this point, the lights are on. So he can see that his way through the tunnel. And he can see the dog's gonna, about to come. And they open the door. The dog comes. He runs back. He realizes he has to get through the razor blades again. Lights out. Lights out. And we're back at the crypt. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And we're back from commercial. No. That dude got eaten by his dog. Oh, my God. Yeah. After he probably sliced his face open like 74 times. Right. Real lovely stuff. Oof. They got their revenge. If Daredevil and these guys have taught me anything... So basically, if comets have taught me anything, be nice to blind people. Yep. Because they will fuck your world up, man. That they will. Do not undermine them. They are not stupid. They just can't see. They, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was that was crazy, that story. I'm pretty sure Karen Page, like, killed herself in the comments because the emotional distress, dude, with everything with Matt. Her or somebody else did. It was real fucked up. Wow. Yeah. But anyways... That's a story for another podcast. So, I mean, this story is so weird. Uh, on a scale of one to 
10 razor blade walls. What are you going to give this movie, Patrick? Uh, give it a solid 7. Really? Yep. 7 razor blade walls. Yep. Guess what I was going to give it? What's that? 7 razor blade <laughs> walls. <laughs> Woo! We're in agreement on something. That's fun. But yeah, it's really, it's like, it's got a lot of the same framing work throughout a lot of the stories. But honestly, I like it. It's like, wasn't bad. It was kind of fun to get through. Mm-hmm. And like, all the short stories were short and sweet enough that it just worked for me. You could really tell that they were like, oh, fuck, we only have like 60 minutes of movie here once we cut all these stories together. So they really fluffed it out at the beginning and end. Yep. Because once we get back into that crypt, we still have to uh, see the door open up again. And he's like, yeah, you guys are free to go now. And then it's just a portal to hell. Yeah. Um, Although, why is that one guy, the guy who is like too uh, honorable to file bankruptcy in hell? We didn't really see him do bad things. Yeah, no, not too much. I'm Everybody sure. else is a fucking scumbag, and he got the worst of it. Yeah. I don't know. I guess in that scribbled out part, because they made that agreement, they did the deal with the statue. I don't know. You know what? Six razor blade walls. <laughs> Cause that I'm guy, promoting you. <laughs> yeah. Because that guy didn't deserve it. So, fuck you, movie. Yeah, his wife did it, actually. Right? So she just, like, gets him, like, fucked up a bunch. So just makes women look stupid and puts a seemingly innocent man through torture. Well, I guess in the beginning beginning of that story, though, it just popped in my head when his financial guy is talking to him. He makes reference that he was terrible to people and he was ruthless and pushed his way to the top. Oh, yeah, he did. Okay. So he was a ruthless corporate businessman, so I don't mind that he got his guts all hacked up. Well, Fair enough. Back up to seven, movie. <laughs> Good job. Ding. So, all in all, is there anything we left out we should talk about? I think I think we covered it all, and that was the probably the easiest one we're going to go through, just because it's five short stories. It's easy to remember yeah. the whole one, instead of one whole story played out over two hours. And I'm willing to bet maybe Vault of Horror is good. But then we nosedive after this into the fucking Tales from the Crypt series. No, okay. I mean, like, there's one that comes out in 2001. That can't be good, right? Yeah. yeah. Is there a good horror movie from 2001? Mm -hmm. Your silence speaks volumes, my friend. (laughs) I, I don't got any for you. I mean, at Cold Pizza NY to find all the goodness we're doing... Uh, at Drew Dorns NY. At Pop Top Pat. Uh, and stay tuned again next week for The Vault of Horrors. Or Horror? I'm not sure. I'll know by then. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs>